All right, man. So I am here with Steven Ocho Peterson. He is fighting Humberto Bandone at UFC Austin, February 18th, Frank Irwin Center in Austin, Texas, otherwise known as uh, UFC Fight Night 126. So, uh, former LFC bantamweight champ, uh, you appeared on Dana White's Season 8 Contender Series as well. Um, you said from day one your goal was the UFC. How did the call finally come, and uh, how did it feel to know you were finally getting in the big show after all the hard work? Uh, well, it started with the Contender Series. Um, after that split decision loss, uh, there was talks uh, of signing both of us, and uh, they ultimately decided not to. They didn't want to take me off of that loss, um, told me to go get a win, and then they picked me up. So uh, J December 8th, I uh, got that win at Legacy and uh, got the call the day after Christmas. That is, uh, that is an awesome Christmas present. Yeah, yeah, ask for anything better. Now, that was actually what I was going to ask you if they kind of tipped you off after the uh, the split decision as to, you know, like, go out, get one more fight in the regionals, and we'll, we'll bring you in. Yeah, they, they, had, uh, they shipped me off to the hospital. I had to get stitched up and whatnot. And uh, they had told my dad and uh, my coach, um, we'll get another win, and then and we'll give you another shot. I wasn't sure what that meant, you know, if they give me another shot on the contender series or what. Um but Benito did well in the UFC in his uh, debut, and then uh, you know I had an impressive victory in December. So they, they went ahead and gave me the, the full deal, the four fight contract. All right, well congratulations on the deal, on the debut. Now, you uh, it, it almost seemed like back in 2015, 2016, after that run you had, like you were on the brink of breaking. In then, were you kind of surprised that it took as long as it did? Um. Man, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Uh, I feel like I could could have been in the UFC years years ago uh, when I was eight and one, eight and two. Uh, I was I was ready, um, but now I've I've learned a lot since then, uh, and I fought in a high level of competition. So uh, every fight I've had is a learning lesson. Uh, win or lose, I, I always take something from it and and try to improve and be the best me I can be in the next fight. All right, now you, uh, you're you training, uh, I believe, at Fortis MMA, mm -hmm. and uh, this is going to kind of be in your backyard. Uh, how fun is it? How you know, much of a benefit is it to uh, debut you know, where the fans are going to be behind you? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to debut in front of my crowd. i uh, got a lot of people driving out to Austin. It's about a three-hour drive from here, so not too bad. Uh, yeah, all my biggest supporters, my fans are going to be there, so... I'm excited to give them a show and uh, just to, to let the world see what I'm capable of. Now, when the when the call for this one came uh, came around, did they call you specifically for Austin, or like did you know you were going to get to uh, debut in the Austin, or did they give you some other options? Uh, well, uh, the day after Christmas, when they had called me originally, they offered me a fight on about three days' notice. Uh, they wanted me to fight that Saturday. Uh, and I said yes. I was cutting weight, getting ready. Um, one opponent's name came up. Uh, he didn't take the fight. Next guy didn't take the fight. And then uh, next thing I knew, uh, you know, there was no longer a fight available. But Sean said, since I was uh, since I was game and uh, stepping up uh, on short notice, uh, was exactly what he was looking for, and that he was going to go ahead and give me the contract. So stay ready. Oh, I'm glad he did. Um, you know. You mentioned uh, the short notice and cutting weight. This fight is at featherweight. You were uh, bantamweight champ LFC. Is 145 your new home? Oh yeah, I plan on staying around at 45, and uh, I feel like I'm I'm better off at, at 145. Less weight to cut. Uh, I feel like I'll feel better. I'll perform better. And the in between fights, I don't have to worry about uh, just constantly drawing myself out to make that weight. I can. Uh, you know, put on some strength, put on some muscle, and uh, really just focus on my health uh, rather than just cutting weight all the time. All right. How, how bad was the cut to 135? Because, you know, we hear a lot of horror stories. Every now and then something like Cyborg comes up and you go, well, okay, this is getting crazy. we got to do something. But how bad was it for you? It was rough. Uh, I've been making that weight since I was 19 years old, so oh, no. 27. Uh, a lot older, a lot bigger. Uh, my frame's grown since then. 
So uh, it, it gets tougher and tougher every time. And the last few times have just been uh, extremely taxing, uh, to say the least. I wouldn't say like horror story, like, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't end up in the hospital. I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't die. So, so that's a good thing. But, but that's what I'm trying to prevent. Uh, you know, that, that would be uh, tragic to see me or any other fighter, uh, you know, die cutting weight. Uh, it's just very avoid- avoidable and uh, it doesn't hurt just to go up a weight class. I mean, the guys aren't that much bigger. Uh, I'm a big bantam weight. I'm a regular, you know, a good size feather weight. So I just want to stick around there and, and see how far I can take it. All right. Now, uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, cutting weight since you were 19. I know you got your nickname uh, from football, actually, and uh, your number, Ocho8. Uh, as far as getting into MMA to begin with, I understand you've been a did a bit of street fighting. Um, one of the things I read is that you actually at times put on MMA gloves for those street fights. What, like, like, tell me a crazy story about that. How crazy did those street fights get? Well, they got pretty crazy. Yeah, we'd go in my backyard, and uh, out of all the kids from school over, uh, everybody that said they could fight, and we'd throw on the gloves and go at it. And, uh, no, nobody really knew much, but uh, we'd always end up all bloody and, uh, you know, beating the crap out of each other. we we get drunk and, and put on the gloves. I mean, no regulation. It, it definitely wasn't safe, but uh, it it gave me experience, uh, to say the least. You know, I was very comfortable fighting. I, I am very comfortable fighting. And, uh, you know, once I started fighting amateur, it was like, man, I was made for this. It, it sounds like the MMA equivalent of, like, backyard wrestling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a little, little bit more real, uh, real competitive. Now, how do you go from that, which yeah, you're doing for fun, you're kind of screwing around a little, how do you go from that to uh, you know, actually starting to train and take this a little more seriously? Uh, well, there was this one kid that he would always catch me in uh, like a triangle choke or some sort of submission. I'd be on top of him beating the crap out of him, and then he'd catch me in something, and I'd be like, what is, what is this you're doing with your legs? And he was like, well, it's jiu-jitsu. So I was like, okay, well, I got to learn that. And I went to where he was training at the time, which is actually out of a garage uh, called Second Chance Gym uh, in McKinney. And I started training there, and the rest is history, really. Just uh, had my first amateur fight 30 days later and fell in love with the sport. That's uh, that's impressive because you're going from having fun to having the discipline to do it legit, and 30 days you're taking an amateur fight. Um, I've seen your pro record. I don't think I've seen your Amy. Did you win the, the debut? I lost my debut, uh, and then I won my next five. All so, right. uh, that, that first one was kind of like, uh, you know, jumping in the water, seeing if I, you know, actually wanted to do it. And I got the crap beat out of me for three rounds, but I didn't give up. And, uh, you know, I just, I knew that I was capable of winning and I just had some stuff that I had to learn. So went right to the drawing board, started learning, and, uh, and yeah, and then continued to grow ever since. And here you are now, man, making your UFC debut in Austin. Uh, as far as that uh, fight goes, you're getting it under your belt early in the year. Your goal for 2018, uh, how many times you want to fight? What are you hoping to, where do you hope to be at the end of the year? I'll be 3-0 in the UFC by the end of the year, without a doubt. 